How's everything? Yeah, we're gonna get to jiu-jitsu soon. Yes, we're gonna get to jiu-jitsu soon. Guys, I'd like you to say hello to the new Enrique. Enrique's been late too many times. So now he's been replaced. Right, boy? No? All right. Come on, old Enrique. Get your ass in here. Do I shake too? No. <laughs> Sit. <laughs> uh, what's up, guys? So let's get right to it. Uh, welcome to episode seven, season three, weekly edition. All right, for 2021. 2022 is going to be episode season four. So we got the first question we're going to start with, guys. As you well know, the uh, the uh, uh, live questions get a pre precedence. So start asking away. First one is from Theodore in in uh, uh, Korea. Yeah. No, I thought it was yeah, a Czech teddy. No, there's more there's than more Czech teddy. teddy. We have American teddy, and we. <laughs> Theodore, if you'd like to be called Korean Teddy, we could do that too because we already have a couple. We have a Czech Teddy, we have a American, teddy. American Teddy. Anyways, guys, so the question is on a single hand guillotine. So let's go right to it. And um, I'm going to try to explain. Uh, Theodore actually sent me um, uh, the, uh, uh, the video of how he does. So I'm going to tell you what I think you're doing wrong, and, and then I'm going to try to point out the critical elements to. For, for anybody else that hasn't really played around with it. So a lot of times um, when I do the single hand guillotine is, so I go for a regular guillotine and my training partner flops on his side as a defensive mechanism. So the first thing I have to do is to make sure he cannot turn to me. That's a must. Because if, if I stop him, if I cannot stop him from coming towards me, he will take my guillotine and achieve a dominant position. So basically, that's a complete failure. Anytime you go for a guillotine and your training partner escapes with a dominant position um, or better position than where he was before, that's a failure. And it's usually, almost always, almost always, it's a technical failure. Um, so when he flops as a def defensive mechanism, the way to stop him from coming to me is, is basically the chin strap grip basically prevents him from turning his head to the left. This is a very strong grip, um, but you would think we're stuck or we're in the same position, we're not. The reason for that is because I can come up, whereas for Enrique, in order, he cannot come up the correct way for him, he can only go the wrong way, which causes a much stronger choke. So basically, he's stuck, I'm not, okay? Now this is much, uh, more explained in greater detail in the BJJ Fanatics uh, guillotine video DVD I did uh, I, I forget when uh, if you go to BJJ Fanatics put in Fox it comes up long story short so if, if he's stuck and I don't quite have the guillotine what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to come up but as I'm coming up usually the guys block your hips from coming up alright from arching because I need to arch to make sure I clear his head it's not, even if he does not block my hips, if his hand is retracted, it's always easy for me to get an underhook. And I get an underhook not by the shoulder, by the elbow. Now, what I'm going to do is arch to make sure I clear his head. And now watch what I start to do with my left hand. So before, it was a chin strap grip, kind of fist with my thumb inside. And now that transition into a flat one. So from chin strap to flat hand, and as I'm coming up, I'm going to try to get it as deep as I possibly can. And as I'm coming up, I hope you can see this, guys. Now, what I'm looking to do is, rather than pull, is to compress. So I'm trying to compress down. I don't know if you heard Enrique's joints crackling. I hope it was not your ribs. Those are bad. Those are really good. <laughs> Recommended. Yes, guys. <laughs> the, the, a byproduct of, of, of this single hand guillotine done correctly is a back adjustment. Uh, anyways, so what I'm looking for is because a lot of guys, when they come up into a mounted position, they pull. When they pull, they start to kind of like the head starts to pop out. It, it hurts. It's more of a crank than a, a constriction. And I found it to not work on me 
let alone on somebody that's, you know, very, very tough guys. So the way I do it is compress down. There's a couple other things I want to point out. When you accomplish that position, so when you come up on top and he's pinned, even if you cannot finish the single hand guillotine, it's okay because he transitioned a failed guillotine into a very strong top of side control with a strong underhook, so now you can attack some other submission. So you're, you, you've, you've done a good job translating a failed submission into effectively a sweep, and a, not just any side control position where he's framing out, He's pinned, okay, with his far side arm. So it's a good job, but let's go back to the single hand guillotine. Theodore, I believe the, the video you sent me, your training partner is sideways. You're letting him be sideways. You have to flatten him out. So let's look at it again. So Enrique flops. I come up. And this is what you allow your training partner to be sideways and you're trying to crunch. No. Flatten him out with your chest. Now focus on rolling your shoulder forward, just like in all the guillotines, well, pretty much all the guillotines I advocate. Shoulder forward and flatten him out. My chest serves as a, you know, to help me in compression. So the arm is kind of in place, the shoulder gets rolled forward, but my chest does the compression, okay? So one more time from a different angle. And now just roll the shoulder forward and compress. If you fail, you still have a very strong type uh, side control with a very good underhook here. All right, do we have any questions on that? Do we, and do we have any votes to replace, permanently replace Enrique? We'll wait for the votes to come in. We have a question from Eng Engsberg. He's asking, could you show a setup of the one-handed guillotine from passing half guard? Uh, I will not do that. In, when I'm passing half guard, I will keep a chin strap. And the reason for that is when you're on top of half guard, you're not that far forward. So when I'm passing half guard here, so if I... Yeah, he can start to stretch me out. He can start to stretch me out. And, you know, now this, yeah, now I'm in trouble. So from here, I will have a chin strap. I will have a chin strap grip until, yeah. So I will use a chin strap grip until I get to a position to either finish him with that the, my traditional guillotine. Again, it's covered by BJJ Fanatics. There is a 50, maybe longer minutes video with me and Firas as a hobby on the TriStar Gym channel about the guillotines. Uh, so you can you can look into that. But again, if I'm passing half guard, I would not use a single hand guillotine until I'm on top top of side control. I would keep the chin strap grip, and a lot of times I will threaten the regular guillotine. Adolfo Ferranda is asking, Fox, although you are compressing your shoulder forward, are you still pulling your hands towards your shoulder to close the space? No. You don't need to close the space because I'm. what I'm trying to do is just, just stay here. So what I'm trying to do is have my hand like this. This is where my... So I'm not pulling. Um, a lot of times, you know, when you're pulling in too many different directions, you're not pulling in any direction. Um, it's, it's kind of funny... Uh, you know, one of my students, uh, we, I forget what we were doing this Tuesday. And, you know, the guy is, looks pretty strong, you know, great shape. And I, I see him, I forget what he was doing, maybe uh, Anaconda. And he's straining. He's like, I, and I'm like, dude, I'm pretty sure you should, should not be that painful when you're actually applying the submission. <laughs> so, you know, you, you got to figure out in, in, in submissions, uh, where the critical points are and, and where to apply the pressure rather than applying pressure through the whole body because then it gets dissipated into areas where you really don't need to. And Kagler Tunka is asking, I know you showed it before, but can you show once again the five-finger counter when the opponent jumps to the side to escape from the guillotine? 
man. Be Road. Yellow face. Boom. That's the only one. Uh, is it? I usually, when he clears it, I usually go to an iron fist. Uh, five finger is different. I, that's that I use in the, you know, in, when when the guy's passing my guard. Um, so I, I'm, I'm going to go with my interpretation, which is five finger when he sort of passes. Hope, guessing and that that's what you were asking for. Um, Wait so, for his confirmation. So again, when he's, you know, guys heavily leading with their head. So the five finger DFG. We've covered that. Guys, Adolfo Foronda has created a Google Docs. I believe that it's being updated on a continuing basis, which, which is excellent. Thank you, Adolfo. Uh, he's done that for it, it just it not cross references just the our uh, our YouTube channel, but also anything I've done for others, including like the TriStar Gym um, channel, which where we have a more detailed discussion. So, for example, in the role with the Fox, the the format is troubleshooting. So I want to kind of ask more a very, you know, have have a very specific question like what is troubling you and how you how do you get around that? How do you fix it? Uh, on the TriStar uh, Gym YouTube channel, that's for as a hobby up in Montreal. I haven't been able to go up. We're not allowed to travel to Canada, and, but hopefully soon uh, we can do another one. That's where we usually do a, you know anywhere from thirty to uh, thirty minute to an hour discussion of more, much more specific, much more focused. So if you want to, you know, YouTube, uh, you know, or, or search certain things, it's on. I believe pinned to episode fifty. It's a Google Docs. Uh, I've sent it out to some people because if you use the uh, app, YouTube app, I think you can you can access a lot more things than you can if you use the, the, the browser. I downloaded the YouTube app. I hated it, so I deleted it. So I used the web browser and my <laughs> my capabilities. You, you, <laughs> you can download the app. <laughs> And also on our YouTube channel, there's a playlist of the antivirus edition and the regular row with the Fox edition with all the episodes so you can scroll through and find the one you need. Thank you. <laughs> and before our next question, we have some check-ins from Vancouver, uh, Iowa, France, Turkey, uh, Phoenix, and Japan. Nice. Nice. Now, the next question is... I don't know who's tuning in from Japan, but... I know we have uh, Kenai Kiyoshi and is, is uh, Shu. If Shu is not, if, she, if he's tuning in live, what's up, Shu? If not, hopefully we'll see you later. And we have a question from Marcus Aurelius. He's asking, can you show a way to pass against a strong knee shield? The question is, is your knee shield strong? Okay, so strong enough for the fox? Probably not. <laughs> uh, so, when, when it, you know when when the guy has a, has, has a good knee shield, I, I don't want to get in, engaged here. To be honest with you, you know because you know yeah. So what I usually do is, is try to put my hand. If I can inside, is even better. But if sometimes you can't, I just back up. Just just so basically, what I'm trying to do is create a little bit of space. So again. You don't have to know how to pass every single guard perfectly. You do need to know how to deal with every kind of guard. And if you can't pass it perfectly for whatever reason, maybe your body type, maybe the training partner is, is bigger, thicker, whatever it is, then you need to be able to translate, transfer his guard or translate his guard into another guard that you have an easier time with. So again, so if I, if I you know, if, if I have an knee shield guard, I will try to, especially with the nogi, try to put my fist, see if I can pull, pull the guy in and break him down like this. So that's, you can threaten that, but sometimes uh, it's just not gonna, it's not gonna happen for you. So again, I, I weave my, my arm through and I use my shoulder to try to collapse his legs and try to pop him open, but you have to control his head. If I don't control his head, you know, things start to get, get bad. So you need to have confidence that you're controlling his head. So again, I will try to, and now as, you know, sometimes as you're pulling the head in, he decides to pull away the head. 
and now I have a different different guard pass. So you got to be, and, it, and it, this is pretty much universal in any guard passing. You again, you you may th threaten a certain guard pass, at least well enough that he has to sort of start to deal with it, which now allows you to transition into a different transition effectively him into a different kind of guard, which you might have an easier time passing. So one more time. So if if, if I if I can't control his head, so what I'll do is just back up. Now it's still locked up, and now he you know he needs to do something. Now this is a very good for me. I like to pass threatening the guillotine. Again, so from here, what I'll try to do is float and threaten submission. So usually in that position, I will float. On him to make sure that I don't uh, lose my base and constantly threaten the submission. So that's one of my go-to. But again, you have to set up those circumstances by maybe initially driving hand through between his legs, trying to control the head as he starts as he, as he tries to free his head. Sometimes guys will frame. So as I, you know, he starts to frame, and now it's a different it's a different animal. Okay. GM Baseball is asking, so you get off of your knee once the knee shield comes in? Uh, yes, yes. I, uh, you know, I will threaten a tight guard pass, but the reality of things are, if I'm going with a 210 pound guy uh, that has a really, really good game, um, the reality is once I threaten tight guard pass, he can, all things being equal, he can, he can probably thwart that guard pass. So I need to transition into other things. Um, what I, um, you know, one of the questions that Adolfo had, we may have to cover it in the next, um, in the next uh, episode is, uh, what happens if the guy starts to bowl up? It's just basically not necessarily the turtle, but as you pass his guard and they start to bowl up to, uh, um, uh, to, to protect themselves. So we may have to take it up next time, but again, the, the basic ph uh, philosophy there is you got to keep moving until until he's forced to reach overreach, and that's when you start to start to get the grips and attack. Um, but uh, it, it's the same thing with 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 guard passing. Um, you know, it's either you can you can try to pass the guard for seven minutes the way you used to. That's your go-to game. And eventually that might work, but if the guy switches a guard and then you need to figure out a way to at least threaten a guard pass against the guard that he's given you, forcing him to, to, to adjust. And in those adjustments, now you can make your own adjustments where you can switch the, 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 the guard that he's playing by changing where you stand, how you, you know, where you are, are you on your knees, are you posturing up, are you threatening knee cut pass? Are you threatening a guillotine or, or a, uh, you know, a back step into legs? So there's a lot of things you can do, but again, you need to make sure that it's not just, okay, this is the guard he gave me and I have to pass it. And going back to the guillotine, we have a question from Valeri. He's saying, hey, pro hey, Professor Enrique, how would you advise to do a guillotine if your partner presses his chin tightly and starts grabbing the, uh, the hands? From uh, the uh, from okay oh that by the way guys that reminds me my check cam that was supposed to be June 11 12 13th of next month got postponed to August 27 28 29 so mark your calendars you know if you were thinking about going reach out to me or reach out to Lukash Yanda or David Sedlock all right so um, if you're talking about from this position Valeri, is, is this what you're talking about where he, the guy's turtle? So the question is, do I have grips or not? If I don't have grips, I have to get grips. So if you don't have grips, there is no guillotine. If you don't have grips, there is nothing. You have to create it. Now, so if I have grips, which means that I can connect my hands, and now he starts to, uh, uh, you know, his... He's withdrawing, he's sort of, yeah, he's, his hands are, you know, uh, now trying to unravel my grip. So this is the grip that I have. So 
So it's my traditional guillotine grip. You guys have seen it on YouTube. Uh, it, it's, it's been covered by many, many uh, videos. So this is the grip that I have. So if I have grips, if I don't have grips, you have to do something else. If you cannot get your grips for guillotine, don't force it. Move on to something else. But if I have grips, what I would try to do is, is drive in and try to clear this elbow. Sometimes, go ahead, tuck in your chin. He's not letting me get the grip that I'm looking for. I take this away, and now I'm going to Anaconda. So again, <laughs> that was nice. So again, uh, you have to create the conditions for the attack that you're seeking. If you cannot create those conditions, do not attack that attack. Attack something else. All right. So I'm just presuming you have at least initial grips like this. If you don't have grips. Back step over him, pull him back, not just just not straight to the side. Make sure, you know, like sideways because otherwise he's going to get jammed up, can hurt his knees. Um, so make sure that if you get grips, you know, what I'll try to do is I will try to go into the anaconda, okay? Now, don't let me get the anaconda. Just come back to your knees. See how easy it is to get back to where I started from if I can't attack from that position. So again, I'm trying to create favorable, favorable conditions for me to attack. Uh, if they're not there, I will move on to something else. Again, when people are hell-bent on defending a very specific area of their body, very specific grips, a lot of times they're leaving you other things available for attack and you have to that's you 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 get as you progress through jiu-jitsu and you learn more and more techniques you start to identify what they are and how you attack them now that's a lot harder for somebody that just started it's a lot easier for somebody that's been training for a while but again if you just started you start to see patterns how do your how do your training partners react to specific attacks or specific defenses and then you try to take advantage of those patterns that you see and we're out of time, Mike. No last question. <laughs> we just did an Instagram live in India. I was going to try to ask one more question. Mike was like, no, no, we're going to start <laughs> this one. So anyways, guys, uh, we will see you next Friday, May 21st. Yes, hopefully. I will be on the road, but I will be, I'll be shooting. We will be filming from the road. All right, guys? You shouldn't be using your phone. I'm pretty sure that they'll be on time. Okay. All right. I'll see you next time, guys.